morning everyone. Um, I'm Zina and today I thought I would do something different. That's why this camera angle is slightly awkward. But I thought I would do some sort of a reading vlog slash reaction to Hamnet as I go along. Slightly annoyed with myself about being so slow with Hamnet. But then as, as I was sort of halfway through it, I thought this kind of this is kind of nice reading it slowly because it deserves to be read slowly, if that makes any sense. So at least I'm enjoying it that way. Um, and so I thought, uh, since I, I've woken up ridiculously early and I've already done loads of stuff that I would normally maybe be doing now, I may as well, you know, read a little bit during in the morning instead of, you know, leaving it until the evening. And so that is my Okay, so see you a little bit later in the day. again and it's a bit later in the day I actually got distracted by well housework yeah doing some well-needed cleaning um, and so in between then I've had some lunch and so on and now I'm about to start reading a little bit more of Hamlet um, and I thought before I continue reading I should just talk about my impressions so far so like I said um, I think I have roughly 100 pages to go and basically I stopped just after the first part ended and there's like the second part coming afterwards. Um, yeah, um, well I read a little bit onwards but I was so tired that I'm just going to go back to the beginning of the second part. Um, anyway, so why I am taking it so slowly? Um, so. How do you say this best? Um, I don't think this is like any sort of revelatory novel for me um, with regards to the topic, I think. But what it is, is this the type of book that as I was reading it, it gave me that feeling like this is why you read, right? Or this is one of the reasons why you read, because the, the prose is beautiful um, but in my opinion not not overly flowery or anything like that um, it's incredibly evocative I personally I'm not actually the best person to like um, uh, visualize scenes like I feel like most of the time when I'm reading when the, the characters are just talking heads really I don't know why it, it doesn't really diminish my <laughs> enjoyment of reading but um, yeah I, I, I guess I don't have that sort of a very very uh, strong visual Im imagination or whatever but in this book um, I can really really see the scenes in front of me not only you know the characters and where they are in the room but also the whole you know the backdrop and so on and that obviously adds another layer of enjoyment for me um, and on top of that, I feel like the characterization is incredibly well done. Um, so I, in the beginning, before I started reading it, I thought it was going to be exclusively or mainly um, Agnes's point of view. Um, but it turns out, uh, well, yeah, I was misled. That's not the case. Um, we jump, we, we, we actually look at uh, they have different characters throughout the the story um and so we kind of jump from one to the other um so far i don't know who 
So far there was Hamnet's perspective, Agnes's of course, then also William Shakespeare's, who is, like man many people have mentioned, never named, but um, he's referred to quite often. He's actually present more than I expected. Um, then there was also um, one scene from the perspective of the grandmother and one of the older daughter. Um, and yeah, possibly some other ones that I can't recall right now. Um, and what I really, really enjoyed with that is that each of those characters seems real. Um, yeah, they just, they really, really <laughs> come to life when you're reading, when you're reading from their perspective. Um, if I was nitpicky, I would say there was one passage where I thought, mm, this is a little bit overwritten, maybe, but that's incredibly nitpicky. It was uh, one scene from Hamner's point of view, and it just seemed a little bit too, how do you say, verbose for an 11 year old. Um, but again, this is, you know, still incredible writing so far. And um, I'm really glad that this is my first Maggie O'Farrell because I get to read a lot more because she's written, what, like eight novels and a memoir, which I actually have here. Um, it was a very lucky holiday find in one of those free libraries. Back to, back to Hamnet. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if there's anything else I want to say. Oh yeah, the, the only thing that I, so far I find is that the characters that we do not get to see, you know, where we don't see their perspective, sometimes feel maybe slightly um, almost like a caricature, or not necessarily a caricature, but sort of, <laughs> some of them seem sort of stereotypically evil. You know what I mean? So they're sort of painted with a broader brush, broader brush, broader strokes, than the ones that we see, um, you know, that, that we actually get to sort of follow along. But on the other hand, uh, when I reflected on it, I thought, well, in fairness, I think most of the time when we hear about those other characters, those, you know, evil ones, so to speak, we do hear f hear about them from another character's perspective. And uh, it may very well be that, you know, it, this is obviously not um, the whole story, but it is how those characters perceive these other ones. <laughs> so in that regard, it might just be completely justified. But anyway, one other, yeah, so one other thing that I loved about the writing specifically, not just, you know, okay, it's evocative of the backdrop and the characters are well drawn. So this is a very, very, to me, it seems very slow paced book, um, which lends itself well to being read very slowly. But whilst it is slow, the moments that have tension, she, she, <laughs> Maggie O'Farrell, um, writes them so well. Like, you can really, really feel the tension and the anxiety of those characters in specific moments. Um, and um, there's, and I find that incredibly, how do you say this, successful. Um, because, so one thing that I also didn't expect from this book is um, the chapters are alternating, so um, we see one chapter which is set in the present day of the book um, and then the next chap chapter will be about um, the past, so it, it starts with like um, describing Agnes's uh, birth and childhood and uh, you know growing up and then also meeting William Shakespeare and their sort of beginning of their marriage and all that and it, there's and like I said it alternates ch each chapter if I'm not mistaken that's at least that's my perception I don't think there was any deviation from that pattern so in the present tense <clears throat> where we have not present tense in the present <laughs> time uh, in the storyline we do have some some moments of incredible tension um and they are always interrupted, right? So that again slows down the action so much, but not that it's very action packed, but you know what I mean. Um, but then as soon as we pick up again in the next chapter, I am personally, I was immediately back in there um, and hooked. Hooked also sounds like the wrong word for this type of novel, but just bear with me. Um, yeah, 
so you know to be able to sort of uphold that or or pick it up where we left in terms of the tension and so on i feel like i've said that word like 10 times now um to be able to do that despite the fact that it keeps being interrupted uh, seems like you know an accomplishment um to me yeah that's my uh, so far my my impressions of this and now i'm gonna have a look and read a bit more of it and we'll see um how it goes on so happened to have vlogged the most reading the most emotional scene or part so far in the novel um, it shouldn't really have come as a surprise knowing where I was in the book but somehow um, even though I thought the writing was super evocative I still somehow did not expect to be this emotional you know I don't know, <laughs> to be this moved uh, by the book. I feel like in the last 40 pages or so, I basically had tears in my eyes almost the entire time and had to like wipe some away every so often. And Yeah, fuck. Um, <clears throat> sorry. You know, I don't know. It's a, I mean, I'm not a mother, right? But the grief of a mother... The child, um, the way she's describing that is just, you know, just brings me to tears. And then, well, I guess you know, even if if you don't have a child, if you've ever lost somebody that you really loved, and especially if you've lost somebody prematurely, I think. Y yeah you can empathize and this yeah the writing was well did its job i guess but um maybe i'm not really in a good position to actually be talking about it apart from good writing and i was basically crying most of the time not crying not not like bawling my eyes out crying but yeah this was, yeah, this is pretty hard hitting so far. And um, I've only just gotten past the funeral bit, you know. So, um, only imagine that <laughs> nothing very nice will come after this. I mean, maybe good writing, but not in terms of plot, I think. Anyway. Let's see. I've decided that I would like to read a bit um, out of this previous passage I read. Um, the only problem is, if you were super, super against spoilers, I wouldn't listen to it. However, I don't actually think it's a huge spoiler. I th think this fact has been established. I mean, it is based on historical events. Um, so, but I mean, it doesn't say it on the... Uh, dust jacket so therefore I would say if you're one of those people who maybe only reads the dust jacket and otherwise are not interested I don't know what you're doing watching the video but anyway if you are then click away I'll try and do a timestamp thing or something um, to let you know where you can start again or something like that um, other than that yeah so you've been warned so spoilery bit I don't think it is spoiler Anyway, starting now. So this is um, just after Hamlet has died, has succumbed to the pestilence, as it is called there. Um, and Agnes has been, you know, sort of refusing to let go of her child, but he must be buried very, very soon. 
um, because you know that well that was one of the rules that if people have succumbed to that kind of sickness they have to be buried really quickly after and um, she is now sort of ready to get on with um, washing the body um, and preparing him for burial so that's the part that I would like to read okay bear with me I might not be the best to do this but I'm going to try a task to be done and she will do it alone she waits until evening until everyone has left until most people are in bed she will have the water at her right hand and she will sprinkle a few drops of oil into it the oil will, will resist, refuse to mix with the water, and will instead resolve itself into golden circles on the surface. She will dip and rinse the cloth. She begins at the face, at the top of him. He has a wide forehead and his hair grows up from the brow. He had of late begun to wet it in the morning to try to get it to lie flat, but the hair would not listen. She wets it now, but it still does not listen, even in death. You see, she says to him, you cannot change what you are given, cannot bend or alter what is dealt to you. He gives no answer. She wets her hands in the water and then draws her fingers through his hair. She finds flecks of lint, a teasel, a leaf from a plum tree. These she lays aside on a plate, blots them from her boy. Yeah, I could go on. But I think I'm going to stop there. Um, yeah, I'm still, I'm still very moved. I'm still very emotional about it. Um, I'll go talk to you Anna, later. <laughs> Look at this little boy. Do you like the dressing gown? I think you do. Quite cozy, isn't it? What about the other guy? Let's have a look. watch again <coughs> hmm? my goodness what excitement hi it is Saturday afternoon now so quite a bit of time has passed but the weather is really really glorious outside today and the parental voice in my head is saying that I need to get out of the house and into the fresh air um, so I think I'm gonna do that I'm gonna take my book because it seems to be quite mild as well for February anyway and maybe um, because I have a bit of knee pain, so I'm not going to go for a week, big walk. But I might just go and sit by the lake and read a little bit. And we'll see how long until I get too cold. But at least I'll have to spend a little bit of time outside. Okay, so who knows, maybe we'll get some lovely footage of ducks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Hello again. It's much later in the day on Saturday. I did manage to go out and read a little bit um, by the lake, but it was only very short-lived because there were so many people on their walks and, like I said, it's an incredibly emotional part in the book. Um, and I felt like it was too emotional to be reading while so many people are walking past me and sort of, you know, children shouting and whatever for this guy. <laughs> And um, yeah, I just it just didn't feel like the right surrounding, so I stopped after like 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, 
yeah, it, I don't know. It just felt like the type of thing that I should be reading at home by myself. I'm quite flushed because I've had some red wine in an inappropriate glass. Um, <laughs> and I get very flushed very quickly. <laughs> um, and I think I'm just gonna settle down here on the sofa. Hopefully one of the cats will join me. Probably the other one, the ginger one, Aladdin. Um, he usually likes to chill out on your belly when you're like settling down and fall asleep there. <laughs> and hopefully I'll get some more reading done. I kind of thought that I might be finished with it now, but I'm sorry, this is the cat clawing around and climbing around the sofa, if it sounds annoying. Um, yeah, I thought I'd be finished, but I'm finding myself in this weird dilemma of wanting to read on but also not wanting it to finish and I don't usually have that problem and the weirdest part of it is that normally if I feel like oh, I don't want to finish I would maybe go ahead and read another book but somehow Hamlet has really sort of got me in its grips but at the same time uh yeah, so I, I can't, I can't really, I don't feel like I can start another one, but like I said, at the same time, I don't want this one to finish, so I'm, yeah, I mean, clearly I've been taking it very slowly anyway, but uh, yeah, I'm in this weird position. I don't know what I'm saying. It's just, it's beautiful. What can I say? This is what it is. Yeah, clearly the cats are having the zoomies and they're going crazy, so I think I'm just gonna stop it because it's really distracting. But yeah, I thought maybe you'd like to see them. Oh, there you go. Yeah, he's running around. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna close this here and continue reading a bit and hopefully finish it soonish. Hello again. It is Sunday afternoon now and I have finally finished this. Oh, yeah, Aladdin has um, annexed my spot, so I'm sitting over here. And I also need to point out that this thing, this pillow cover, was purchased by my, uh, by my husband who was, who was missing home at a time when this was not associated with Brexiteers. Um, just so you know. <laughs> okay, um, anyway, so I've finished this now and I am still incredibly moved and emotional. I actually did end up crying a bit, not just having a tear in my eye all the time. Um, and I'm not sure, I'm, I'm quite happy that I'm glad that I didn't, never intended to make this a review video of sorts because I kind of knew that, well, A, I don't have any experience in practice and then I thought, hmm, I could probably not do it justice and if I wanted to, oh, sorry, there's a helicopter, um, and if I wanted to do that, I'd probably have to like sit on it for a while and think about it, but yeah, for some reason I was prompted to document the reading of it any instead and and yeah I'm not sure if I have very succinct thoughts on it or closing words just that the way grief is described I know I already said this but uh, the grief yeah in all its facets and by also you know by different people not just Agnes the mother but also father and the siblings, you know, the twin sister, um, and how they sort of not, I don't know, even if you can call it coping, but how, yeah, how they, how they go on after and how they hurt. And um, that was just incredibly powerful, or, or I don't know, powerful. how do you say this? I don't know, it was just incredibly moving. There was one part where Judith, so that's the that's Hamlet's, Hamlet's twin sister, she asks her mother, "What what is there a word for me? You know, for somebody who was a twin, and who 
twin has died because you know there's words for children who've lost their parents and there's words for husbands that lost their wives etc but not for her I'm I'm gonna say the same thing about ten times now it's it was very very moving and um I don't know. I felt it was very apt in the way it portrayed that. Um, yeah, so I guess one last thing, I don't know if it's the last thing or not, <laughs> but um, one other thing, you know, what I mentioned before that, you know, there's always these chapters alternating between the present and the past in the story time. Um, that is not the case anymore in the second part. It's very much, you can tell, you know, I th yeah, it's, it's this division of before his death and after his death. And after his death, the second part is like, I think just over a hundred pages, if I'm not mistaken, um, which is just one continuous uh, narrative with no chapter breaks in between. We do still see perspective shifts. Um, like I said, it does at some point, you know, we, we do see um, Judith and Susanna, so that's the siblings' um, point of view. But yeah, mainly it is Agnes's and then also to a large extent uh, William's um, perspective on the loss of their son. Um, but yeah, so there's just continuous narrative, no breaks. Um, and, you know, that divides it further, I guess, you know, it's uh, on the sort of, I don't know, the stylistic, stylistic level, um, making that sort of distinction. Yeah. Um, again, this is not a review, <laughs> clearly not, but um, I guess my closing thoughts would be, I'm very glad that I still have lots of Maggie O'Farrell to read. Um, and I think the hype is absolutely justified. I think I've said that before. And I'm saying it again now after I've finished it. And um, yeah, give it a try if it in any way, shape or form interests you. Um, but yeah, also I guess if you are very vulnerable emotionally, maybe give it a pass for now. <laughs> um, that would be my advice. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm gonna end it here and uh, figure out how to edit this thing, which is probably not gonna be <laughs> not gonna be as easy as the previous videos. Um, yeah, and I hope to speak to you soon. Maybe let me know if you've read it and what you thought of it. If you maybe you have some uh, more concise thoughts on this than me. Um, yeah. Until next time, <laughs> bye bye. Hey, um, I just wanted to add that my questions for comments on this book are definitely not perfunctory. I would very, I feel the strong urge to talk about this book, and I do not know personally anybody who's read it. So um, please, please, please let me know if you've read it and you would like to chat about it either on Boxer or some other messaging thing, or in the comments, that would be really lovely. Um, and yeah, that's it. <laughs>